Hello, my name is Lily Jackson, and I worked with my mentor, Dr. Brett Jones, who sadly could not be here today, on a film study titled Church Sisters vs. Sorority Sisters, Black, a critical comparison of black women in Cabin in the Sky and School Days. The purpose of this study uh, is to get a perspective uh, from college students on the portrayal of black women in these films and to see if they recognize any similarities in the media that they consume today. Yeah, the type of media we consume and what it shows matters because of the pervasiveness of pop culture in our society. And positive representation matters because people want to be entertained and they want to see positive reflections of their identities in the media that they watch. Negative representation has disastrous effects on marginalized communities. For example, a 2017 Georgetown Center on Poverty and Inequality study found that negative portrayals and stereotypes of black girls and women lead to black girls between the ages of five and 14 to be viewed as older and less innocent than white girls their age. And this ultimately leads to more suspensions for black girls in that age group. Film has a direct cognitive and emotional effect on us due to mirror neurons. Research also shows that we empathize with characters on screen. Italian psychologist Vittorio Gallies coined the term neurocinematics to describe the study of human emotional response to viewing films. Therefore, film can either change public perception and attitudes about minorities or reaffirm them. The history of negative representation of black women dates back to slavery. Sojourner Truth's Ain't I a Woman speech publicly highlighted how black women were left out of women's rights discussions. And in 1920, W.E.B. Du Bois wrote an essay on the damnation of black women, discussing how society damns black women into inaccurate caricatures of who we are. Between the time of Sojourner and Du Bois, four common stereotypes of black women emerged in American media, the Mammy, the Aunt Jemima, the Jezebel, and the Sapphire. Mammy is often an overweight and dark-skinned woman that raises her master's kids and gives comical advice to her white mistress. Modern examples include the black best friend, which is oftentimes a minor character, to a white major character. Aunt Jemima was mammy but a cook, and she came from the association of black women with domestic work. The Jezebel is still seen in modern film today. She's often a mistress or a temporary girlfriend. Sapphire is where the strong, independent black woman came from. She's either a family matriarch or a career woman who always has her hand on her hips and a pointer finger wagging in the face of a no good man. These stereotypes can be found in many classic black films. I chose to study Cabin in the Sky, released in 1943, and School Days, released in 1988. MGM Studios produced Cabin in the Sky because they wanted a film that could appeal to a white mass audience while attracting more blacks into theaters. The film centers on a journey of heaven and hell and features two female characters, Petunia and Georgia, are the archetypical Mammy and Jezebel. Racial, religious, and sexual politics are at play in the film. School Days f discusses two groups of black students on a historically black college campus, uh, the Greek students and the non-Greek students. The film features focuses on colorism, that is skin color bias, and hair texture bias through the division of the women into the lighter skinned wannabes and the darker skinned jigaboos. The sexual mistreatment of black women is also discussed. Both films fall short of accurately and progressively representing black women. Modern film has greatly been impacted by feminism, yet black women are neither accurately represented on their gender, nor are they on their race. Dr. Kimberly Crenshaw, the legal scholar who coined intersectional feminism, argues that when feminist theory and politics that claim to reflect women's experiences and women's aspirations do not include or speak to black women, black women must ask, ain't we women? We must also ask this about the films that we watch. These films still have social political effects on black women today. This study was designed as a qualitative investigation in two parts in order to compare the films. First, participants would view a film and immediately answer an online survey offered through Qualtrics. 
After the survey, participants had a question and answer debriefing session, and their responses were recorded. Participants were randomly selected via the SONA system. Originally, I wanted 12, but ultimately, the study observed a focus group of three white American students, two females, one male, between the ages of 18 and 32. The study yielded interesting results. Cabin and Sky rated more favorably among participants in terms of relatability. Uh, this reflects the intent of Cabin in the Sky to appeal to a mass audience. Indeed, some participants found themselves at a loss when trying to comprehend the um, cross cult when trying to comprehend school days due to the lack of cross cultural appeal. Two-thirds of participants rated Cabin in the Sky higher than school dates in terms of how comfortable they were with viewing the film. Common observations included a dislike in the portrayal of black women in both films. One student felt that black women were um, either good or bad girls and nothing else. The students also answered using time period as a context. They would say, well, for the time period, it was appropriate. Um, only one student acknowledged that these issues are still present in media today. Uh, inferring that overall students are unaware of the presence of these issues in films today. Further study would be needed to support this inference, but it is something to consider because there may be a disconnect between recognizing that past issues still exist in current times, thus impacting changes in media representation. My participants fall within the millennial and Gen Z groups, and most movies and television shows cater to our demographic. Student one sums up this study like this. Uh, for me watching it, it made me feel kind of sad for women to feel that way. And the way that they were talking to each other and treating each other was sad. It was just kind of sad to think that that could be the reality for some people to feel that way about themselves and be judged on their looks and hair. She said this when discussing the division of women in school days. And yes, it is sad. In conclusion, media is reflective of our world and vice versa. Black women in film rarely escape the divisive colorism and stereotypes of the past. Therefore, black female characters are rarely fully realized. Yet, as suggested by my initial findings of the study, there is hope that change will come. Participants were able to identify the inaccurate portrayals of black women in both films and somewhat explain why those portrayals were wrong. Films do not change until audiences demand they change. The demands have slowly started being listened to. When positive representation becomes the mainstream, black women will be able to answer, yes, we are women. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, mom. <laughs> points for that the time periods that you compared what what amazed me was it was I think uh, 80s and 40s yes um, do you think that perhaps at that time that could have been how black women actually acted when they were in the positions of uh, what you stated the mammies in the home because they were expected to help raise the children maybe that was the way they actually talked um, could that be a possibility? And then my second question is, do you think there have been improvements? Because I know in your age group, you didn't see the 40s or the, mm -hmm. were you born in the 80s? No, you no I was born 80s. in 96. So <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you forgot so that. The, so the, I forgot, yes. So, so how do you really know um, you know, they're uh, the Jezebels. I mean, because they had the swing period. Uh, you know. uh, okay, mom. So, sorry to interrupt. Uh, research from the Jim Crow Institute on segregation, and I forget which university is from. I want to say Kentucky. Um, actually, did research about the creation of those images and the purposes they served. Uh, mammies were oftentimes an inaccurate portrayal. Uh, most house servants were oftentimes lighter skinned black women who were skinnier and oftentimes they were raped repeatedly by um, white masters. Uh, the mammy and the Jezebel was created to absolve any uh, blame towards white men for uh, black women's rapes because the mammy made black women be viewed as less desirable 
whereas the Jezebel was hypersexualized. Um, she was a temptress. Basically, th basically, she was created to say black women deserve to be raped because they were asking for it. Um, so that is why those things are inaccurate. So do you see uh, today, when you look at movies today, do you feel that black women are being portrayed more positively? No. <laughs> It's starting to change, but very slowly. You do have those rare films like Black Panther um, and A Wrinkle in Time that do work to fight those things. But for the large part, no. Uh, mostly because the film industry is still what's considered an old boys club. Uh, it's mostly white and it's mostly male. And it mostly appeals to that. It is starting to change, though, with the rise of Netflix and streaming because it gives young screenwriters like me a chance to get our names out there. Major networks like NBC, uh, Disney, ABC, they're, they're not going to take a risk on um, a black lead show from a newcomer unless, because the argument is, oh, that's not going to make money. Um, however, for me, going into that industry, I feel confident due to the rise of streaming, digital streaming, and what that has allowed for other young writers of color. So I'm confident that I will have a job and that people will like my stuff. Thank you.